please welcome Mr. Steve Chukri. Steve, come on up. You got to get here before the music stops, Steve. That's Off part side. of the deal. Good to have you here. Welcome. You. Good to have you here. It's early. Yes, it is early. I walk slower. Yeah, I know the feeling. Well, welcome. Good to have you here. What's going on with you? You're a, you're from Mesa, born and born raised. raised. Born and raised, but uh, I've got to give a shout out to Sally and Sean and her team, and the Mesa Chamber Board of Directors because their leadership uh, is presenting opportunities like this morning. So if we could give them a quick round of applause. Yeah. So I was uh, I was born a day after you. Uh, I, my birthday is August 6th, so happy birthday. Well, then, and happy birthday, fellow Leo. That, Come on, that, was, a, that was a compliment, because clearly I'm younger than you. <laughs> really? Is this, well, happy birthday to you too, Steve. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> what, what, cla what high school class were you in? What, what grade, uh, what year? 1989. You're younger than me. All right, <laughs> let's move this on. Um, what high school did you go to, by the way? I went to Brophy. Bro oh, okay. Uh, born and raised here in Mesa, uh, live here, my residence is here. Uh, and I gotta tell you, I, just to see the colleges and the prominence the East Valley is starting to have, I, I think that's exciting for someone that was born and raised in this town. My grandfather was the first licensed auto dealer in this state, and his dealership started just a couple miles on Main Street here in Mesa. Uh, and, and the dealership property is still in the, the family today. So to see Mesa come such a, a far and great way uh, with the leadership of our mayor, with the leadership of our council and others is, is exciting to me as a resident. It certainly is. It's, it's amazing. Just, uh, it just it, It's grown so much in the last three or four years. It's unbelievable. And uh, good things are on the horizon. Yeah. Talk a little bit about the Restaurant Association. What, uh, what, what's, your, what's your role there? The Arizona's restaurant industry, for, for many of you, uh, I'm sure you see it every day. Uh, it's, it's one of the best industries, the hospitality industries, I think, that are uh, thriving in our economy. Uh, Arizona's restaurants this year are going to total $10.5 billion in sales. We've got 8,500 restaurants and about 260,000 employees. So it's a, it's a great place uh, to be. Uh, it's, uh, restaurateurs are, are some of the most creative people and innovative people I've, I've come to know. So uh, I love doing what we do. I've been there 11 years. Uh, Mark and uh, we, you know, we're not just the place where you propose anymore. We we're, we're the place where you you celebrate all of life's events. And I, and I just read that um, one of the restaurants is actually doing uh, breast exams. That's correct. That's correct. And uh, and that's why you've seen. Oh wait, uh, that was that was over there. I'm you've sorry. seen Twin Peaks and other restaurants uh, yeah. come out of that too. Yeah. yeah. Those are technically restaurants. Um, <laughs> Channel. 7-Eleven viewers are going, these guys are ridiculous. Sally, Sally didn't tell me I was going to get in this much trouble, but I'm, I'm going to go <laughs> along with it. Well, you know what? This, and I'm throwing you curveballs. I'm talking about stuff we didn't even talk about. But um, give us, from a business perspective, you hear a lot of people talking about minimum wage, raising minimum wage, and why we need to do that, and how people can't afford to, to raise a family on minimum wage, and blah, blah, blah. I, I think I know where you're going to go with this. Talk about, from a business point of view, what happens when you monkey around with the minimum wage? It's a sensitive subject uh, for, for obvious reasons, but, but I will tell you this. There's a misnomer in, in the restaurant industry that uh, everyone is living paycheck to paycheck, that uh, no one can afford to have their own car, it's all public transportation. Uh, and when you really break it down, let's, let's talk about servers uh, who work at a Capitol Grill or work at uh, Ruth's Chris, any of our finer dining establishments. Their average salary is $45,000 to $50,000 a year. Uh, and they're working part-time, if you really think about it, because of hours. So I think we're an industry of convenience. We're an industry that allows moms and dads to enjoy their families, uh, all the while still being able to work. So when you go in and you tinker, you've got small business here today. You go in and you start tinkering, not, let's talk about the restaurant industry, but let's talk about all other industries with that minimum wage, and, and then as it relates to Arizona, attached to a CPI. So where else in the free market, let's, let's ask this question, where else in the free market do you automatically get a raise depending on how the economy does? Not how the business does, but how the economy does. And that's what Arizona passed about six years ago, is that any time our economy goes or the CPI goes up, the minimum wage goes up. 
if the CPI goes down, the minimum wage stays flat. That's not the free market enterprise this country was founded on. What does CPI stand for? Uh, consumer Price Index. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, so what we look at from a restaurant industry, when you factor in tips and you factor in the wages as a whole, we're a very competitive industry. Uh, and so when you go and you start to do this thing, what you effectively do, long, long answer to your short question, is you, you start to, to go from, instead of four people working a shift, you go to three. Uh, instead of four chefs, you go to two. Uh, so it really, in some ways, can cut jobs uh, rather than prop them up and, and keep people uh, gainfully employed. Well, I know it's such a, such a uh, hot button topic or issue, but that, you know, they say that 99 out of 100 economists will say that when you raise it, you're actually doing more harm than good. But anyway, you I are. just want to get your take on that. Thank you. And, and while we're on the uh, just stream of consciousness here, I saw this on uh, the news. Did you guys see the Drew Brees flap on uh, he went and got some food to take out at his favorite restaurant? That was takeout. I see a couple people nodding. It was takeout, and the bill came to $74 and something. And he just left a $3 tip because it was just a bag full of food. Well, somebody, a server took a picture of the receipt. They put it on the Internet. Everybody's calling him a cheapskate. Um, What's the take on takeout? So the, the, uh, the industry standard, typically, when you go to a takeout restaurant, let's define what that is. Uh, that's not, uh, it's in, actually in two categories. Uh, we have a segment called fast casual. Your wildflower bread companies, your payways, everyone knows that, Paradise Bakeries. Uh, your average uh, tip in a situation like that's about 10%. The same holds true for curbside service. So when you go in, you pick up your food, you leave, a 10% tip is the industry standard. Probably anywhere from, from 5 to 10% works. But I will tell you, we are the hospitality industry. So taking a picture of one's receipt <laughs> and texting it out and, and sending it to the viral world uh, is not what the restaurant industry is about. And, and I, I'm sorry to hear that that happened. An employee shouldn't be doing that in the I think that employee is looking for a job today. Yeah. But, yeah. Well, well, cool. Well, um, so what else? What, just out of curiosity, what's the largest restaurant um, I don't want to say chain, but I guess that's the word that makes sense, in, in Arizona. You know, we, that, that's hard to track. You've got so many different concepts. Sam Fox, for example, has many different concepts and locations. Uh, so you're, you're probably looking at uh, the average restaurant that, that's going to top out at probably 25 or so restaurants being one of the largest restaurants, and we have several of them. Great. Uh, you know, I'm, I was looking here, and, and one of the questions we like to ask our guests is, what's, what's a little known fact about you? Um, wow, this got my attention. Tell us a little about your little known fact. Well, when you ask questions like that, you really find out how boring you are uh, <laughs> as an individual. Uh, but uh, I, I had the good fortune of, of working for Matt Salmon, Congressman Matt Salmon, in his first stint. Uh, he's, he's currently just was reelected. Uh, and uh, we were, I handled all of his government, or all of his international affairs work. Uh, and so that took us to the far stretches uh, of the world. And, and one place we got to go, it was based on human rights, uh, was to uh, the Dalai Lama's home, uh, just the three of us, in his living room for an hour. Uh, and you want to talk about a man, I'm, I'm Catholic, uh, but, but that day I guess I was, I was of his, his religion in the sense that what, what, a, what a presence he has. And, and there isn't a bad bone in the, the man's body. In his living room had two couches and a light bulb attached to the wall. That was it. So he just, he came to us and he said, at the end of the conversation, just remember one thing. I'm just a simple man. I'm a simple monk. Uh, and if someone's not going out and doing the Lord's work, it's, uh, it's got to be him. Wow. He spent an hour with the Dalai Lama. Was that the same kind of feeling you're getting by spending 20 minutes with me? I would actually say... <laughs> Because I'm my, just a simple man. Yeah. Well, I will say, though, when I have my next interview and that question is asked, uh, it's going to absolutely be Mesa Morning <laughs> Now, when you say uh, that you handled Matt Salmon's... You have more hair than the Dalai Lama. I do have more yeah, hair? Yeah, yeah. The one guy. Now, when you say you handled Matt Salmon's international affairs, could you clarify that? <laughs> Because in this day of politicians, we have to right. make sure we know yeah. what you're talking about. We're, we're He's a good fan legislative, of it. Legislative Le matters. Legislative, legislative matters. matters. So thank you for the clarification. That eliminates the next three yes. jokes. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, cool. So um, 
What, what else would you like? What, what do you think, if you had a crystal ball, what do, what do you think's the uh, future of not only the, the restaurant association, but the hospitality industry in, in Arizona? You're, you're embarking uh, upon what I believe is, is what's going to be the next generation of restaurants. Uh, when you go into a restaurant, and it's happening already in some, you're going to be ordering your menu off an iPad. Uh, if you go and get a wine selection at Fleming's, for example, they're handing you an iPad. They're going to start taking orders. Uh, your order is going to go directly to the kitchen uh, and, and come right out. So w from a technology standpoint, uh, I think it's going to be one of the most advanced uh, industries when it comes to, to technology. And I think you're going to see the diversity. Any of you who are residents of, of this state uh, know our, our culinary diversity has certainly uh, improved over the past two decades. And I think that's only going to get better. and We're going to be a, a, a destination uh, for, for dining. Now when, now, when Fleming's gives you the iPad, do you have to give it back? You do. Okay. You, you know, it was the same question my eight-year-old asked on, on uh, Saturday. <laughs> I, yeah. I'm, I'm a simple man. He said, um, well, you know what? As a, <laughs> as a uh, example, you know, I travel a lot. I'm in airports every week. And not to give a shout-out to Sky Harbor, but, boy, do we have the best food selections at Sky Harbor? I mean, they're, they're high-concept, really nice. Terminal 4 is, is fine right. dining. It so is. It, it is. It's, you know, ways. you go to some of these places, and the best you can get is a vending machine, you know? So, right. Uh, uh, well, well, good. So um, you feel like the restaurant industry is definitely uh, not peaked? No, we have not peaked. Uh, our, our growth this year in sales is $500 million in and of itself. Uh, and when the economy, when you factor in, it still hasn't fully healed, um, I, I think you're going to only see that continue to grow. That's awesome. You know, I've noticed when the economy really hit the skids, um, a lot of the restaurants really were aware of, hey, we've got to, we can't rest on our laurels with our menu items. They all came out with that intermediate price. Right. Like, for example, Outback, because my kids have all worked there for Matt. Um, they, are, they started coming up with, you know, they had like 10 options under, under $15. And, it's, you know, the restaurant industry is very creative and very resilient. And, uh, Absolutely. They cater to the, to the economy. And here's the good news for all the consumers. It's going to be that way for some time into the future. Uh, I don't see restaurants being able to change that kind of pricing anytime soon. Great. Can we talk about the county? Absolutely. Go ahead. Ask questions. I don't know anything about it. There we go. <laughs> I called it Maricopi a second that's ago. That's right. That's right. That's right. <laughs> that Sheriff Joe's got two deputies yeah. out front that want to talk yeah, to you exactly. about that. Um, what, um, tell, tell us about the county. You're the man. Well, it, it's exciting, too. Uh, Maricopa County is actually the fourth largest county in the nation. Uh, so we, we have a hard time imagining that. L.A. County is the largest. You've got Cook uh, County, of course, in Chicago as the second largest, Harris County, and then, uh, uh, and then us. Uh, so uh, it's, it's a fabulous place. Uh, I see many of my constituents in the room, uh, but I will tell you that uh, you ought to sleep better at night because we were able to, to lower your taxes by $32 million this year uh, with uh, Maricopa County tax property taxes. So we're, we're excited about that. I thought I heard an applause, yeah. And, and I think what we're working to do for all of you and, and for you, Mark, if, especially if you live in my district, uh, we're, we're trying to make sure that the county is best in class. Uh, every one of you and your jobs and in and, and the businesses you run, uh, you know, they, we work to be best in class and, and best in customer service. And, and I think we're, we haven't hit the mark yet, but we're going to certainly work uh, hard until we do. Much like the question about the, the restaurant industry, what's the uh, prognosis for the county? The county's having some tough times now because property taxes lag and, and we're kind of in our own uh, deficit, if you will, as it relates to the economy. So we had a down economy at the state legislature a few years ago and because of how our tax rolls work, we're, we're in a difficult period of time. But it's very rosy, it's very optimistic as, as we get into 2014 and 2015. Uh, so I, I think that um, we're, we're only gonna see brighter days ahead as a county, which I think as taxpayers, uh, that means there are going to be better days uh, for all of you as well. Am I supposed to look at the crowd? Or am I only supposed to look at you? Well, it's most kind of people late have to a ask hard that question. Most people have a hard time not looking at me. That's true. Um, That's true. <laughs> you know, us old guys. They say um, ten pounds yeah. adds. They say yeah. the camera adds ten pounds. <laughs> I could tell it does. <laughs> I'm not in your uh, district, Steve. <laughs> 
But I'll make sure that those that aren't uh, cast a vote elsewhere. No. <laughs> no, you're doing a great job. Anything else? Um, I don't really have any. I bet we've got questions in the audience. We've got to your constituents. Look at the hands go up. The County Board of Supervisors just appointed a new Justice of the Peace. They appointed the County Assessor, Keith Russell. That seems an odd choice. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you, it's, it's something that uh, we believe in. I'm, I'm partially responsible, majority responsible for that. Uh, when, you, when you get into these appointments, uh, it gets difficult. And, and my whole goal uh, as a newly elected supervisor when I sat down with the Arizona Republic was we used to just have a knee-jerk reaction and say, let's appoint so-and-so. Uh, there's no transparency. There's no process to it. Uh, and, and so we, we had to put a stop to that. We did that with the appointment of Max Wilson's successor. Uh, Max Wilson was a county uh, board of supervisor. Uh, and we did the same thing here in that we had 28 applications. And of the 28, roughly uh, 10 or so uh, were not even living in the district. They, they were really disqualified uh, by virtue of that. Of the 17 we interviewed, I interviewed every single one of them face to face. And you want to talk about an unpopular and un, uh, in, in unenviable position to be in is having to appoint someone with great talent. Uh, and so Keith's decision uh, at the end of the day was, was the right one for, for me and for the board. Uh, but I will tell you there are many qualified people that were in consideration for that job and that we took the time to meet with again uh, in many cases, three, to, three as a matter of fact, and we're actually looking to either place them in other parts of the county or help put them into a different uh, position because their talent was that good. But that's a good question. Any other questions for Steve? We've got uh, just a couple of minutes before we got to wrap it up. Anybody? Don't be shy. Here we go. Mr. Craig? That's an excellent question, and we we just got back a study. I haven't I haven't viewed it in, in its entirety yet, uh, but yeah, it does complicate things uh, with with how we we operate, with how we uh, offer the, the different lines of insurance to the employees. We employ thirteen thousand people, um, uh, of which most of them are full time. Uh, so I haven't parsed out how many would would be uh, not uh, included in in the new Obamacare, if you want to call it that. Uh, but a majority of our employees do qualify. A majority of our employees are already getting health care. Uh, but it does, it does complicate things. Uh, and I'm even seeing in Congress where employees uh, that uh, are of the federal government uh, are having a hard time because now everything's coming into to play and everything's uh, changing. Uh, but I, I think we're going to be okay. I don't, I don't, from what we see so far, it's not going to uh, inadvertently make our rates go up uh, or our overall cost of health care, providing health care to our employees. Great question. We've got time for one quick question. Otherwise, I'm going to uh, wrap it up and we'll turn everybody loose because these folks all got businesses to run here. Steve, you don't have to leave. Hang on a second. We'll just wrap Great. this up. Thank you. How about a big round of applause for Mr. Thank Steve Thank you. Chuker?